All right, we are upstairs at the Park Street patio with Scott Terry from Red Wanting Blue for another edition of Five Questions With. I'm so excited. Great show tonight. Thank uh, you. Played a lot of new tunes. Uh, very receptive crowd. Are you finding that the, the people are really liking the new stuff? I, I, yeah, I have. Um, I mean, I was a little worried, uh, you know, initially, as anybody would be. I mean, it's not our first record, as I've said. Um, you know, you always want to outdo yourself, and you always want to remain as, you know, current and as strong as you can be and um, this record was a little different than some of the other records that we did because we used to pump them out a little faster uh, they were you know never quite as uh, we didn't spend as much money on them we did them more you know locally and we'd be in and out of uh, uh, Schwab studios in like three days and we'd have a record um, and this one you know we started after Pride Pride was the first real record we did um, that we took a lot of time with and then um, we had warehouse sessions that was sort of to bridge the gap between Pride and then these Magnificent Miles. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, Pride in my opinion, I mean, that was definitely my proudest studio record before this one. And so I really wanted to, you know, make sure that people didn't think we lost whatever it was that we had. And so um, and I think that as a result of this record uh, taking a bit longer, We've gotten to try out a lot of the songs, you know, and there are there's a few songs on the record that were on Warehouse Sessions, you know, uh, to try to bridge the gap, like I said. So I think that some of the stuff, it's I think people are happy uh, that those songs that they've been listening to, that they know the words to, they finally had like a full, you know, radio version of that song, like a studio album version that they can hear. Um, I mean, listening to it live is one thing, but usually people listen to the studio version and then they go to the live. Yeah. In our case, it was like reverse, but I think people really, really like it. And um, and then you know, at the same time, throwing all the new stuff, I think that uh, I think it's the most uh, accurate assessment of, of who we are like when we play live and the stuff. We do, so, what's your favorite song on these magnificent miles? It changes like every day. I would say today, I would probably say the band. You played that live tonight for the first time? No, I did not. That, that was, uh, we played Gravity. Gravity. Gravity for the first, the first time, time tonight, which I, was horrifying to me. Yeah. I'm not much of a uh, rhythm kind of guy. I, you know, singing and, singing and shaking tambourine is, uh, is uh, it looks deceivingly easy, you know. I sat for quite a while. <laughs> practicing that one by myself. You did the uh, Todd Snyder trick of putting a hidden cut on the album and not even letting anybody know that it's on there. I did, yeah, we did do that. Um, that song to me kind of wraps up the entire album. You revisit a lot of things. Is, is that a fun yeah. thing to do? Or is that kind of a, just, you know, you're, you're at the studio, it's late. You, just... you know, yeah, I mean, when we initially wrote the record out, um, when we started, we, we picked it, we had over 20 songs. And we knew that we weren't going to be able to record, you know, we, we knew we were going to be cutting a lot of songs that we really, really liked and we, you know, we weren't sure what was going to make it and what wasn't. And that was a song that I'd written that I, you know, was sort of pushing for at one point. And, um, you know, obviously it wasn't going to make the record. We didn't bother, uh, you know, we, we had so little time. We, we did as much as we could and um, I wanted to, it was the last night, it was 5.30 in the morning and we were shutting everything down, locking everything up, and I said, before we shut the stuff down, I just wanted to record it. Uh, so I just went in with my $100 baritone ukulele, and uh, I did one take, and I recorded it, and uh, it was one of those, you know, yeah, we got it, sounds good, okay, moving on. And then I never heard of it again, and then we wound up uh, going to uh, the, um, I never heard, I, after that I forgot about it, and then we were getting final mixes from the record, uh, from Jamie, and he was like, hey, I found that thing you did the last night, and I said, uh, oh, right, 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 I did, yeah, I never got that, and he was like, well, I, it sounds pretty good, man, he's like, I'm putting it up on the, uh, on the servers with the, the final mixes, so take a listen to it, you know, hopefully you should pull it off, it should be fine, and then all the other guys heard it, and they were like, that's a ghost track, done, it's a ghost track, and uh, so I didn't have much to say about it, <laughs> but I was actually, I mean, I was happy about it, you know, it's a great song, I think it's, it's probably, it's, the title that we, I, I always called it was I Don't Want to Hear It, and uh, it was um, it's kind of like more of a sad bastard finger in the air. <laughs> a finger in the air after you've gotten your shit kicked a few more times. And it's like 4 a.m. in the morning and you're really tired. So. You have a huge online presence. How has 
MySpace and Facebook and, and the internet allowed you to connect better with fans? Um, well, I think that, you know, I, I'm so unqualified to answer this question because I'm the, like, the most caveman uh, guy in the band as far as computer work goes. Uh, but I, I think it definitely helps. It helps a lot of bands. Um, you know, it's. I'm curious to see how it will continue because, um, you know, MySpace took over websites. Suddenly it was like, don't worry about your website anymore. It doesn't, you don't have to have a cool website. Just put up like a page because, like, MySpace is everything. You know, and then now we're at a point where it's like, oh, MySpace is so oversaturated. Everyone likes Facebook now. And you don't, you can't mess with anything on that. So you can't, like, put up artwork and you can't really, you can't make the page your own. So, uh, but people really like that now. I'm curious if we're going to go back to websites. I'm curious if, we're gonna, if there's going to be a new thing, you know. Um, I remember seeing, we were out on tour, and there were all these bands at this festival, and every one of them had, like, they all had websites on their stuff, and I was like, man, we got to do that, you know. And then, you see, later, you never, you don't see the, the website anymore. You see MySpace backslash, or you know, forward slash, the band's name. And then now it's like on Facebook, you know, on T-shirts, and it's like, wow. So I'm curious to see what, what happens next. I think it does help, um, but it's, I think it's a double-edged sword too, because I think that people are so um, tired of like, I don't want to be friends with this band. I don't want to be friends with this band. Stop asking me to be friends with this band. Yeah. You know, and it happens a lot. So you gotta, it's like mowing the yard, you know, rake, raking leaves. You're like, I gotta get rid of all this stuff. You got a bunch of big shows coming up. Uh, CD release party in Cleveland and a uh, big show at the Newport, October 17th. Yeah. Um, you seem to always play there and you, you draw a decent crowd. Do you like playing on campus? Um, I do. I mean, I, I, lo I love the Newport Music Hall because of the history of the room. Um, there's not a lot of rock clubs that are still around that have been, you know, have gone through so much. I mean, mind you, it doesn't have this original name, but. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a great. I think it's a great room. I like being close to the, the college, you know, kids so people can walk. That's a huge thing. Um, but at the same time, you know, we also deal with hits on that too. You know, we're playing a place like this tonight, where we see people that would never come down on campus that come out here because it's just more their speed. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I don't know. But then again, try to get all the kids to come out to some place like the, you know. From OS Pavilion or the LC, you know, and that's just more capacity. So it's like, wow, you know, who knows? Outside of Columbus, uh, what is your favorite place to play? I would probably say either uh, places that I really like. I mean, Cleveland, the town, of, I mean, the city of Cleveland has been really, really great to our band. Um, they they love us and get the play the House of Blues up there, and I don't know any band that's ever been in a House of Blues and says I've hated it. I mean, they take such great care of you. Um, so I really love playing up there. Um, I like playing, uh, you know, Mercury Lounge in New York City, you know. It's like being in New York City, period. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, the Pageant. The Pageant in St. Louis. Oh, yeah. That's a great room. That room is an unbelievable room. And that's all mom and pop, you know. There's, that's a really great room. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like I like the divey places. When you start seeing those big rooms, they're great. But at the same time, it's it's so scary because you're like, wow, you know, it's a uh, playing some place like the Mercury Lounge. You're like, okay, there's you know stickers on the walls. Everything is sticky and reeks of beer. Like like the Saint in Asbury Park. The Saint is I an amazing place. Love that. Room. Scott is awesome, man. That guy has kept like the, all. He has kept original music in that town. I mean. The Stone Pony, I remember asking about the Stone Pony and somebody said like, you don't want to play the Stone Pony. I'm like, what are you talking about? I grew up in Jersey, man. Why would I not want to play the Stone Pony? And they're like, well, because it's mostly cover bands and they get, they charge $10 a head and the bands only get a dollar out of every head, out of every, you know, person that comes to the door. I was like, oh my God, it's like robbery. It's like, uh, they have an obligation, you know, with Bruce Springsteen. You can't, you can't do that. You can't. Get screw bands, but they, uh, that's what they do it. So Scott has sort of picked up the slack. And, I mean, that place is amazing. And it's for as small as it is, the bands that he has come through there. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Final question, what are you looking forward to most with the new record? What do you want to do? I want to try, I want to tour more, you know. Uh, we tour all the time and uh, 
it's it's nice to have. You know, I've seen the ebb and flow of of just being in a band over ten years, and uh, there's nothing like having a new album under your belt, and if it has a you know, great response, it's you know you have something to tour on, you have something. It's like everything kind of rekindles and starts all over again. And this past year has been a really great year. I feel like it's uh, things have sort of been rolling in our favor, you know, for the first time in a long time. So. Uh, I'm just hoping to keep that rolling, you know, and uh, yeah, getting getting further west. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Bro.